Okay, we're starting to record. Now we got to just put ourselves on uh, on uh, um, line here, and we should be ready to go. There we go. Got it. We're being live streamed now. That's what it says. Okay. Hello, everybody. How are you? This is the simple show we do on uh, on uh, <laughs> on Mondays. Uh, it's simple only because I just go directly to to my Facebook page, which is uh, uh, facebook.com forward slash. I think it's Abe Bennett, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Wait a minute. Let me look. Let me look. Let me see here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, yeah, slash Abe Bennett. And you can go watch it there if you want to watch it there. And if you don't want to watch it there, uh, you can watch it later when we post it to YouTube. And uh it's kind of amazing. Um, I don't know how many people we're going to have today. Uh, one of our people uh, wrote me and said they weren't going to be able to make it, uh, but we'll see. They might be able to, they said. Maybe. So we'll see. Anyway, let's uh, let's admit the people who are here so far, uh, which is Edward Berger and Lynn LaFrisco and Richard Sheckman and Scott Boddicker. Uh Hello there, Edward. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, hold on a second. Why, oh, oh, admit all. I said admit all, didn't I? Yeah, there we go. Here comes Len LaFrisco. Here comes Rick Sheckman. Uh, and um, yeah, so that's, that's good for starters. Um, hello there, Rick. Hello, Ben. Hello there, Len. Good afternoon, sir. And how are you out there in Plano, Texas, the home of Snapple? Scott Very Bart good. Very yeah. good. Thank you. Yeah. And the home of uh, terrorists as well, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, close. <laughs> he lives in Little Elm. It's just a like a suburb of Plano. But... Yeah. Yeah. They, they indicted a... Uh, who do they indict there? Is El Elmer, Elmer Fudd Stewart something... Yeah, but roads, uh, roads, roads. But it was for the uh, for the uh, uh, the January sixth thing, right? Yeah, yeah, seditious. Yes. Yeah, part of the uh, Proud Boys, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was an oath keeper, but I could be wrong. oath keepers. Oath keepers. You're right. What oath are they keeping? I have no idea. <laughs> hmm. Not their oaths, that's for anyway, sure. Anyway, and uh, um, uh, let me see here. Uh, Oh, where do we where do we start? Oh, I'll tell you where where we'll start. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you all for doing this on Monday, because of all the programs we do on um, on uh, GabNet, uh, this thing is clear in a way the most popular. Last week, we you see we don't we usually get a couple hundred people a night watching our show, various ways and so on. This was twelve hundred last week. Wow. Oh. And it, it keeps going up every week. And I think people just enjoy. People saying nothing. People <laughs> say, <laughs> it's a show, show about time, nothing. Though. It's a show about <laughs> nothing. It's truly a show about nothing. And hello to Marjorie as well. I have to Hi. say hello to her. I had to travel to get here. What? I had to travel to get here. What do you mean you had to travel to get well, here? Well, that's why I wasn't on at 4 o'clock. Well, I saw you heading for the kitchen as I was coming in to do the show. So, did you get yourself a snack? I got myself something. What did you get? Come on, I want to know what. You, what What of our food stuffs are you eating? I'm, I'm drinking. Something. Oh, you're, you're drinking seltzer water. No. No. Oh, wine. I'm drinking a glass of wine with ice. Uh, with ice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Works for me. Uh, yeah, right, Rick. Rick gave that look, like with ice. No, well, it waters it down. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway. By the way, we saw really, uh, we saw an incredibly good movie the other night. Not uh, expecting it to be good. Yeah, we didn't expect it to be good. It's one of the screeners we we get to watch because it's nominated for a the. The uh, acting performance is nominated not only for uh, a SAG after award, but it is also uh, for the Oscars as well. Yeah. King Richard. King Williams. King Richard. Richard yeah. 
right? Uh, with uh, what's his name? Uh, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Um, yeah. Will Smith, who's been wow. nominated for an Academy Award. Of all the nominations this year, it's the best performance. Easily. Easily the best performance. Not And not because he, he's playing out of character, but just because he's so damn good in this thing. And he so transformed himself. Yeah, and, and well, tell them what it's about, Marjorie, because they don't know what it's about. about the father I, of I know what it's about. And, and Venus Williams. I yeah. saw it. Yeah. Oh, you saw it? Yeah, I saw it in the movies. Did you agree? Do you agree with us? Yeah, it's a good movie. I mean, was, was that exactly. a hell of a performance yeah. on his part? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, I don't when know where. What? what? When was it out in the movies? When it first came out, whenever it was, I think in November, or December, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A yeah. month ago, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we're getting to the point where we're going, it's time to figure out who the best actor is, the best actress, and the best movie. And who cares? And who cares? <laughs> exactly. They, they're, they're beginning to believe the Oscars are not going to get a good audience this year. Well, did you oh, see the three women? Did you see who's hosting it? Who cares? Yeah. Who? Uh, Amy Schumer. Who? Amy Schumer. Uh, who are the other two? Uh, the, two black women. The woman. Um, the, the comedian from. Uh, uh, oh, Wanda Sykes. Wanda, Wanda Sykes. Wanda Sykes. Yeah. And I mean, then one other woman. Who cares? <laughs> who cares? Yeah. You know, but th that's not the point. I think all these events that they pay incredible amounts of money to be able to carry, okay, are starting to get a lot, little long in the tooth. You know, I mean, well, look at the Olympics the last 17 days. Who well, cares? Uh, we'll get to that it's in a horrible. second. But you go all the way back to um, uh, um, what was it, the Golden Globes? They finally dumped it because it got tainted. It should have been tainted like. 20 years ago, but it was, you well, know. no, it appears that or won 64. <laughs> yeah. yeah what, what, as best newcomer. Is that it? Yeah. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, it just, it just, but the thing was now you mentioned the, um, um, Oh, look, an old, somebody we didn't normally have. Wait a minute. He went away all of a sudden. Come back again, Wes. Come back again. Um, uh, uh, the Olympics. The ratings have been horrendous for the Olympics. It was terrible the way they presented it. Mm -hmm. Terrible. Well, you don't know how they presented. Hello, Mandy. There's Mandy. <laughs> She's driving. <laughs> 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 anyway, oh, hey, it's yeah, it's uh, it's President's Day today. You don't have to go to work, do you, Mandy? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna keep getting hand signals from you. Yeah, I, I just was trying to mute it because I'm sure it's gonna be loud in my car. But no, it's not. Yeah, I was off today and I was shopping for my mom's birthday, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I pulled my phone out to look at an app, and I was like, oh, I'm supposed to be on the call. <laughs> not shopping, so. boy you are loyal you know no. yeah i do the same I thing started I to listen but i couldn't hear and i thought i feel like i can hear it better when i'm on it <laughs> but i'll mute it if it's too loud in my car no the car sounds it doesn't sound it sounds right. fine you know okay. don't worry about it i'll let is you know raining down there what uh, what did you say it rain, is it is it raining down there it started raining today yes nice. yeah yeah I haven't seen rain in I think 60 days we're up to now. Uh, well, I mean, it is good. It, yeah. it is good to have it. I agree. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so uh, hello to all of you. It's always, I always look forward to this. And, and you know, do you notice that Le Edward today is not only has a cartoon voice, but he's wearing what I consider to be a perfect Elmer Fudd hat. Oh <laughs> I did notice that. Did you notice that? You know, it's a big over the top like that. Yeah, that's right. Did the only thing to... is, it should be red. Uh -huh. we're, we're truly an Elmer Fudd hat. Okay. <laughs> 
Um, do you know anywhere, Shaq, we, we can get him a job as a voiceover guy? Because he's got the perfect cartoon voice. No, you've got to be Will Smith or something now to be a cartoon voice. That's the trouble. I don't like it when they, I liked it when we had voice actors like Mel Blanc and uh, there were quite a few others like him, although he was the, he was the big guy. Although Bill Thompson, people don't remember. No, Bill Thompson. Mel Blanc was not really the big guy. He just had a good contract. Mm. There he, were 20 people doing voices in Warner Brothers cartoons, but he had a contract that said, you could only put my name on the credits. Oh, okay. Well, I, but he did do a lot of them, you know. Yes. Uh, I mean, when he died, it took 20 different people to take over those voices because everybody came along and they did the one voice perfectly, but they couldn't do, couldn't do any of the others. So, but um, uh, then there was Bill Thompson. People don't remember Bill Thompson, do they? Droopy. Droopy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Droopy. Yeah, as many you say Droopy, you go, oh, okay, that was Bill Thompson. Yeah, it was Bill Thompson. And he worked for a lot of other people, too. He worked for Disney, a lot of Disney features. But uh, now Will Smith would have played Droopy. Yeah, that's the terrible part about it. They go, they go out and they hire, you know, famous actors. And they say, oh, and Benedict Cumberpatch is in this and so on is in this. And, and the fact is that what do they know about doing character voices, you know? So, but they just want to have those names there, mm -hmm. you know, but um, uh, uh, one of my friends, uh, old time friend, knew him for years, uh, uh, Tom Kenny is probably making more money doing one voice than anybody else in, in show business. And he does SpongeBob. Yeah. And he's been doing it for what, 20 years or something? Yeah. Yeah. I, remember when he, I remember when he was a stand-up comedian out here. I go see him all the time. I love that guy. And if they have a SpongeBob toy with a pull string so you can hear SpongeBob and it's his voice, he makes money off of that. Yeah. It's royalties. So, I mean, uh, I, I haven't talked to him in a long time, but if I met him, I wouldn't ask him the rude question, how much money have you made <laughs> doing that? <laughs> you know. So how have you been feeling, Rick? Okay. I told you I saw one of the worst movies I ever saw over the weekend. Yeah, I know. Go ahead. Tell us. Because I, the week before, I told everybody, don't watch, watch Licorice Pizza. The Power oh. of the Dog. The Power of the Dog. I thought it was terrible. Anybody else here see it? Very pretty to look at. Really? Okay. Yeah. I'll agree. Yeah, um, but I never, I always found Jane Campion kind of a boring director. Well, she hadn't done a film in like 15 years, so it's not like she's prolific. What was the last one she did? Well, she did, remember the, the name of she it. did the piano, didn't she? Wasn't yeah, that, that was in like 1993. Yeah. yeah, and that was a boring picture. Yeah. Yeah. She uh, She's an expert in boredom. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, but it, it's a Jane Campion film. Okay, here's 12 Oscar nominations. Congratulations. Well, now we have a guilty pleasure we're watching now. And it really <laughs> is awfully good. Do we want to admit it, Marjorie? No, you can. You, this is all yours. Uh, on uh, Hulu, Pam and Tommy. Yes, yes. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> because it's not really as much about what you think it's about. You think it's going to be about Pamela Anderson and Tommy, uh, what's his name? Tommy, Tommy Lee. Lee. Tommy Lee. Uh, Tommy Lee. Um, it, 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 it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 yeah, it's about them, but it's more about the stealing of the tape. Yeah. And the distribution of the tape and yeah. Seth Rogen is in it and for the first 15 minutes that I was watching it I didn't realize it was Seth Rogen. Yeah. Right. He was so muted in his character and he's yes. very yeah. long and he's really good. And he's yeah. the guy that steals the tapes. He uh, takes the did whole he, thing. Again, I don't What's I've not the seen it, name? but did he steal it or did they get feed it to him quietly? Well, no, uh, there's that. always there's always been that 
theory. Yeah. Okay, there's always been that theory. But according to this showing of it, he actually stole the safe. And according to a documentary we just watched on TNT about the whole thing, the guy did steal the, t- the uh, safe. The only thing is, he says he stole it all by himself, and nobody believes that because it was a 500-pound safe. Yeah. yeah. That was the only thing that was unbelievable. Who is the, who's, what's the actress's name that plays his girlfriend, the porn actress? She was in Orange is the New Black. I can't think of her name. Oh, I don't know. I I really don't know. Yeah, uh, but yeah. she's good. She's a good actress. I like and, her. and they've got, what's her name from Downton Abbey playing Pamela Anderson? And, oh, uh, yeah. and they've got Sebastian Stan, who was, uh, among other things, uh, in the Marvel pictures as, uh, oh, what, what, what part did he play? He was a bad guy. Uh, and he he's plays uh, Tommy Lee. And um, it's really, it's just, it's very good, you know. The fact that they got to put all those tattoos all over him, yeah, mayhem. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, in makeup, that, do you know makeup? That's one of the easiest things they have to do. Have to do. Oh, they, really? just, they just have the tattoos all made up ahead of time. They're decal. Yeah, decal. Oh, and, and they put them on them. And I think if they're working for five days, they just don't take a shower or something like that. You know. Yeah. And uh, uh, don't have to go back in and do it again. But it's just they go boom, they go boom, you know, they put them where they just got to remember exactly where they all go. Yeah, yeah, he has a lot. <laughs> yeah. And they have enough photos of him. And then I think the breasts are fake. They're they're somehow CGI'd onto her. Oh, okay. And 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 the penis is definitely CGI. <laughs> The penis. There, this is the only series I've ever seen with a talking penis. Yes. <laughs> it's it's a, it, it's very good. If you get a chance to watch, it's on Hulu. It's better than a frozen penis. That guy. Yeah. Oh God. What's Bro, this? Some some guy that was in the uh, cross country yeah. skiing. His penis froze. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. His penis froze. Yep. Probably, probably penis help me here. <laughs> and and what did they do? Did they have to thaw it out? I, I don't, did it freeze I, onto anything? I, no, 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 just skiing cross country. I guess he didn't have it wrapped. It was below cross zero. Country. It was below zero. There was a wind chill. They even shortened the race because of that. And something happened, and his penis froze. I <laughs> what do you do for a frozen penis? <laughs> Honey, <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever, That's whatever you do, this, whatever man. you do, don't hit it with a hammer. Yes. You know? <laughs> I mean, whatever it takes. <laughs> frozen penis. I wonder. I wonder what that's like. Wow. Oh. Well, at least I don't recommend it. No. Yeah. <laughs> I bet it ain't fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, what's the worst thing about the Olympics are are some of the. Uh, play-by-play people that are over there that do the interviewing you know uh yeah, well it, I, they, they were complaining last week about somebody who was interviewing this woman who was just crying oh yeah over what had happened and then when he she's he's he finished with her he goes well thanks for talking to us <laughs> have a nice day you know i mean just uh and all those you like those stories don't you the little uh, pull at your heartstrings clips, Marjorie. You like those, don't you? Some of them. What do you mean, some of them? You tell me, oh, I like those. Some of them. And what I like is I like, we got Peacock. Okay, just for this. Which no other reason to get Peacock. Believe me, I've looked. There is nothing there you want except maybe Yellowstone. Yeah, and- I-, I was going to say, I, want, I got it for Yellowstone. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they can get rid of it after the month that you watch Yellowstone, right? There's nothing there. But anyway, they that what they do is they would have something like the figure skating. And if you watch the coverage that they did, the, the stuff that wound up on Peacock, it is without commentary. Mm. No commentary. And I like that. I really I do. What do you need some doofus saying to you, you know, and look at here, her spin. 
you know. Well, you like to know the names of it and how hard it is and the points that go against well, it. Well, but yeah, but they, they had all that stuff up on the screen. No, they didn't. Yeah, they had like how, where they, they stood and what the scores were. The scores, but they didn't say what the name of the thing they were doing and how hard it was and how many points it would be. I, well, I know it's hard. I couldn't do it. <laughs> right? I like the commentary. That's well, since point. since you, you're you the one who really watches it. Well, you you're know. not in the sports, period. Well, how much of figure skating did I watch with you? Not much. A, a lot. A lot. More than I would ever want to. No one old told you to stay in the bedroom. <laughs> That's what she always tells me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she always tells me. No one told you to stay in the bedroom. Oh, okay, let's we'll stay in the bedroom then. And curling. If I never see, I mean, what the fuck is curling? I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it too. How many? Three. Raise your hand. How many love curling? See? Two, it was three of four of uh, five of they, them. They showed the history of it and they showed in the early days they were using house brooms. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. why it's yeah. called brooming. Yeah. And what they're using today are brooms, but they're just specially made for the sport. You More know. like a Swiffer. Yeah. 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 yeah you could use you a Swiffer. Some of those guys come over and pick their up there. Yeah. But I mean, what's what's wrong with curling? It's a nice leisurely sport, and, and it seems like something I could actually do. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, it's more of a skill yeah. than it is a, an athletic endeavor. I have yeah. a question. What we're watching curling, it'll say third end, yeah. and then it'll say seventh end. Yes. When does it end? How many of them? <laughs> Eight of them. I think it's eight How or many? Nine, eight. Know. I think, eight. Eight. I think it went to ten. Maybe. maybe. I went overtime one time. I think they went to eleven. Oh. Yeah. How many? I saw eleven one time, but they were tied. They kept going. Is there a time frame for each end? No. Um, I did see a clock, but I didn't understand it. They they get like thirty eight or forty minutes for the whole game, and that's everything. That's the aiming and the pushing, and then it stops. So yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, so. feed chest or something. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I enjoy it. it I just it's kind of like I, it's the sport in which I love the way they start. It's not like somebody goes out and just runs or something. They just slide slowly, mm -hmm. and then when they're just right, they turn it and it goes. And you're sitting there as they then come out with the brooms and they're, they're doing the broom thing. And then it hits another one and pushes it out of the center. And this one goes into the center and you're going. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think Great they, sport. They, they push it. Don't they like long, go into like a deep lunge or something? Like yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a very slow lunge. But I mean, it's very, it's very easy it's an easy oh. sport yeah, yeah you know yeah um uh it's, it's like bowling yeah, well bowling is a little more yeah. more uh, <laughs> more motion in in bowling you yeah. know this is like the slowest sport ever created mm -hmm. what about uh, croquet <sighs> Not an Olympic sport, I guess. But. I don't know. Croquet is croquet a sport? No. I guess it is. Bocce yeah. ball. Bocce well, there you go. Bocce ball. Bocce, ball. Yeah. bocce ball is really curling. I mean, it's the same thing. It, it is really. Yeah, because yeah, you're, you're right. The balls. You try to take a little. You're, you're trying to. Yeah, you're just trying to get close to the. the Italians little, couldn't little. afford a broom, so they came up with bocce ball. <laughs> 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 I I like uh, uh, um um I used to, that's usually played by old guys, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's the old Italians because yeah. they, they grew up with it. Yeah, yeah. How's everything going with you in sports, Charlie? You're 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 a coach, not a coach, a umpire. umpire yeah. And then you I was freezing you. my butt off last week. I had two nights. I was out there in thirty degree weather. Did oh. you did your penis freeze? No, no, no. <laughs> very protective of it. 
<laughs> but I mean, it, 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 it's, but uh, so so what do you do exactly? You 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 don't usually umpire, although you've had to lately, right? No, I do usually umpire. I've been umpiring for thirty. This is my thirty seventh year. Oh, okay. All right. Do you get people get really mad at you? Oh, all the time. Really? Yeah. And and, and what kind of leagues are these that are playing? These are. This is adult recreational softball so okay adults that are playing for fun supposedly mm -hmm. but if they don't like your call <laughs> they'll be waiting for you with a knife in the parking lot after the game oh. <laughs> no i've never had that happen <laughs> but they Too act like it's during the game because i would think it would be difficult being an umpire for uh for junior baseball you know for like the kids because the parents can probably get really bad i did little league for a year before i did mm -hmm. softball and that was so bad i quit because so, the parents they would be waiting for you with a baseball bat in the parking lot because you call little johnny out wow so oh. i couldn't take that i said it's not worth it they don't pay me enough yeah. for that. yes and uh well yeah mm. Well, I uh, uh, the only problem is that we miss you on the night show because you're umpiring yeah. all the time. How many well, days a week? How many days a week are you doing it now? I signed up for three, but I had to do four Tuesday through Friday last week. So oh, okay, that's why yeah. I couldn't get on the night show. Yeah, okay, well, that's cool. Uh, Shaki, anything new in your life? Are you going to go on any cruises lately? Yeah, uh, nothing till June. Nothing till June, and then what kind of a cruise? That's a good one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's Bucharest to or it's Budapest to Bucharest. I can't remember which direction. Yeah, yeah. And then four nights in Transylvania at the end. Oh, good. Yeah. Of course. If there's no war. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, where is where where is Transylvania? It's not. It's, it's like Romania, next to Russia. It's next to Russia, but it's not. It's not. No, it's not near the Ukraine. Ukraine's on the other side of the Black Sea. I see. Okay. All right. So you're going to be up in that area? Yeah. Well, I told you when I was in the Ukraine, there's a McDonald's I could see off my ship, and there's a <laughs> statue of Lenin in front of the McDonald's. How <laughs> <laughs> so bad he's spinning over back the in train. his hand. Now, now, did you go, did you spend some time in the Ukraine or did you just boat through it? Oh, no, several days. Mm -hmm. I was on the Odessa steps, things like that. Oh, okay. All right. The secret underground submarine base, which I guess the Russians will now recommission. Mm -hmm. The secret underground submarine base. But if it's secret, how could you find know where it is? Because it was decommissioned. Uh, oh, I see. Okay. All right. But so you were you were in the Ukraine. Oh yeah, several days. I hear it's beautiful right now. It's really oh, it's a nice lovely. country. Yeah. Yeah. Well, get to it while it's still lovely. Well, yeah. I don't think you can travel there at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh. Uh, I, uh, I I I I'm I'm of a, of a thinking that he's not going to invade. You know. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> you know. But then again, if you've seen Putin lately, I mean, we're not getting into politics really here. We're just getting into well, health are. issues. <laughs> what? I didn't vote for Putin. What? You know, it's not our politics. But he he just looks, he looks, he has MS. And he looks, doesn't look well. You know, he kind of looks like he's at that point in his life where he might actually attack the Ukraine just because he can. You know? And I, that'd be sad. That'd be sad. Uh, but uh, we're, you know, what, what, what's our, I don't think we're going to get involved over there. I don't think we want to. If we started fighting the Russians, that'd be World War Three. But. Yeah, but it's our job to keep the peace around the world. Why? I don't know. <laughs> Well, gee, it, 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 we could also get to see two world wars in our lifetime. Well, you weren't around for World War One, or two, rather. No. Yeah, I was around. I was just, I was born in 1939. And uh, as a 
I, I don't remember the war. I do. Rem- I do remember one thing. I had one slightly. I have one memory of it, and that was right. You couldn't get sushi. No, we had a blackout in San Francisco oh, wow. um, one night, and my parents told me what it was all about, and they had to like you know pull down the shades and do things like that, you know. But that was because the West Coast was perhaps the most available to the Japanese if they were going to attack anything, Mm -hmm. you know? And so we always, you know, they, whenever they thought something might be happening, they had an air raid and I was in a blackout, what they call a blackout. All the lights in the city went out. I remembered that as a, I guess I was four or five, something like that. That was just a few years ago. (laughs) My granddaddy was an air raid warden. An air raid warden? Wow. Whatever they did, I don't know. I just remember seeing his like little ID badge. Yeah. And my like, um, grandmother, what it was, and she told me that he was so much older. He was in World War One. Yeah. Like, wow. Um, and he got the Spanish flu, so he kind of got out of like any kind of combat. Yeah. So, well, it, it's it's interesting that World War One was only called World War One. When after World, World War II, when after World War, II. World War II, before that, it was called the Great War. The Great yeah. War, war to end all wars. The war to end all wars. Yeah. Um, and there was a new one pretty soon after that. I mean, relatively soon. I yeah, mean, but that was a police action, whatever the hell that meant. <laughs> oh, the really? Korean war. The well, no, the Korean War. I call that World War Two Point Four. <laughs> I mean, we fought all these little skirmishes, like Vietnam. You know, but they been... weren't little skirmishes. They it weren't. Lasted long Vietnam World lasted. War II lasted. Yeah, yeah. And Vietnam lasted a long time. Well, we know how to keep our wars going longer now. I think yes. we're very good at that. Oh, here comes Steve Bender. He said he might make the second half of the show to me, and it was really nice of uh, Steve because uh, thank you so much, uh, Steve. Steve for sending me a note. Yeah, well, I felt bad. I wanted to be here, so I made it. Oh, okay. What were you doing? You couldn't... Tutoring. Tutoring. Uh, ah, yes. The yeah. great tutorer. Yeah, need to make some money, so... How much, uh, can I ask, how much do they charge for tutoring, usually? Well, in the circles that I travel in, it's very expensive. Uh, I'm working through an, an agency... I mean, the, the unethical tutors working with private school kids get around two fifty an hour. <laughs> Let them cough first. Yeah, around two hundred and fifty an hour. Two hundred and fifty an hour. I, I don't get near that. I get oh, like, oh. yeah, I, I get, I get, a, I take a hundred an hour, which is fine. Yeah, uh, I w- I'd be, be happy to do that. You know. Yeah. But nothing. you know, the, the problem is, you know, when you if you pay. $250, $300 an hour, you would demand immediate results. And the only way you get immediate results is unethical tutors. Like when I was a teacher, I was reading papers that I know were written by tutors. I don't even know if the kids read them. <laughs> you know? The tutors wrote them? Yeah, so I, and I will not do that, right? I'll help the kid. I'll make suggestions and tell them how they can be better. But I'm a teacher. I'm not a crook. I'm not, you know, and then parents will get fed up sometimes and say, well, my kid's still getting B pluses. And I'm like, you know, I yeah, that's fine. But hey, do you ever have to say, "Face it, your kid's stupid"? <laughs> well, if you want to be instantly fired, I mean, I've, <laughs> you know, I've certainly thought I did once a long time ago when the parent was demanding that the kid get A's, and I said, "The only way this kid's going to get A's is if she cheats." <laughs> <laughs> Ow. You know, and now she's a social influencer making millions of dollars. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, don't know, I don't know when it happened that kids, high school kids, are supposed to be great at everything. Mm-hmm. And if yeah. they're not, there's a problem. I mean, I sucked at trigonometry. I didn't give a shit. I knew, I, I knew no one was ever going to ask me to find the cosine of anything. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't stupid, but I wasn't a good student. Yeah. Um, I was uh, good at the things I liked. Well, I, I was terrified of, of, of school. Uh, uh, because, uh, and the thing that terrified me was when I first started out, they had, um, for instance, I remember they would 
do it. You would take a piece of paper and you would fold it so that it was in like four sections. Okay, so it had a line down the page. And then the uh, teacher would start saying two times two, and you had to write four. And uh, eight times seven, blah, 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 blah. I don't even, can't remember what eight times seven. 56. You know, the 56. Good. You went to, you were the finance guy in school. Um, what the problem was is that I found that when they were doing this, my hand was shaking so badly, I couldn't write the numbers down. Wow. Because I was so scared of this whole process. So they weren't teaching me. They weren't teaching me in a way that I would like learning. Interesting. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I became very good at a lot of things, but there were things that I was interested in and that I self-taught myself. Yeah. But, but nowadays, nowadays, if you said this made you feel a little bit uneasy or nervous, mm -hmm. you'd have extended time. You'd have an automatic A. They'd put you on this, these medications and you'd be fine. Or they wouldn't allow you to teach it. Correct. Wow. Wow. And I, I, you know, as I said, I ended a almost 40 year career in education with very little belief in education at this point. Well, I, I you know, here's what happened with me, for instance, uh, and, and we're going back to the pl plasticine age of teaching. Um, um, oh, look, she's ready. Look like she's ready to rob a 7 Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, anyway, um, uh, I, um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, I forgot. Now, oh, what, I, what I just found with school was that in my day, it wasn't something that really grabbed you. You know, it was all rote. It was numbers and memorizing numbers rather than teaching us how you got to that number. Yeah. You know, the process, I, I think that, Teaching should be more of processes. Absolutely. Well, now she's going to go rob a bank. <laughs> did, you, did, did you feel that way? Did you feel that way through high school and college, even? Uh, per, le, less so. Uh, but see, what happened when I was? Oh, I know what I was going to say. When I was growing up, when I was a kid in grade school, they told taught reading by the look-see method. In other words, here's how the word look looks. Here's how the word um, um, uh, happiness looks, you know. And they didn't teach us that you can learn the word. Yeah, yeah. yeah, in other exactly. words. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, one day they decided, hey, you know, that isn't the answer. Phonetics is the answer. Mm. And they went from look-see to phonetics. But by that time, I was really lousy at reading because I was, I was trying to, Oh, well, what does that word look like? You know? And mm -hmm. so I had to reteach myself to read when I went into radio uh, because I had to read commercials. And so I read, I taught myself, I taught myself phonetics. I think uh, they should go back to phonetics if, in the early, you know, they don't do it. Yeah. And I think it's a way to get kids to read. Who don't what read. are they do? What are they doing now? I don't know. I don't know how what they do with the little kids. I feel like I did phonetics when I was in that grade. I know I did. That's how they taught us. Yeah. But when I was growing up, it was look see. And it was a terrible, terrible way of doing it. Now, uh, the other thing was math is mathematics. And I should have asked Rick this because he's the big finance guy. He's he went, well, what did you you graduated in finance, right? Well, I have a master's in finance, which doesn't mean a hell of a lot. How's that working out for you? <laughs> it sat on my office wall for 30 years in Letterman. <laughs> it means you know some math, though. Yeah, yes. Well, in it, fact, yeah. when I was in undergrad in college, I won the math medal. Wow. And I got a $200 prize. Sweet. Really? I won the English medal and won a prize. <laughs> wow. all covered. We should go on Jeopardy together, right? <laughs> Well, I won the gold medal, but it was a bag of flour. Yeah, <laughs> no. Um, but uh, but, I mean, but also when I when I first started college, I was at NYU, and I was so arrogant. I took calculus. I still have no idea what it is. What's the point? Yeah. How did it work? Look who's home now, by the way. 
Yeah. Uh, it is home. And never lost her signal once. They must have good <laughs> cell service down there. Always a good uh, good thing every time you get home safely, especially yeah. in Atlanta, especially in the rain. Oh. Thank yep. 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 yep, yep. Uh, but anyway, the thing was, Rick, when I was, math was another one that I had problems with, as I told you, because of the numbers thing. And I think today they really don't have to teach kids Math. Well, they have calculators yeah. now. I didn't have a calculator. Yeah. No, but this is that's the answer, though. I think that what you've got to be able to learn, okay, be honest with you, is how to use is it. It's the process you get used to get to that number, to the final number. So that a calculator probably is something they should learn how to use. Uh, because even if, like even in accounting, you have to know how to get to something you have to, it, i'll i realize that like math helped me just learn how to problem solve yeah. you know you just you still have to kind of know how to get to something you know to have the brain you know the well the it's the tool. it's how do you get to the process you know how do you how do you get to the final answer and if you use a calculator so what i mean it's not it's not like calculators are for the privileged few you know, you gotta know the formula, what to plug in. You know, if you want the area of a circle, you got to know what the formula is and the calculator will help you, but you got to know what the formula is. Yeah. But that I'm saying that's part of what I'm saying, learning the process. Sure. Oh, oh, by the way, hello to Jason, who usually calls our night show. You haven't called in a long time, Jason. Uh, hey, Tanya, man, you're too late for me. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not that old, but still, I can't stay up that late. And also now I got a, a same company, but new job where I work an hour earlier. Oh, okay. Who are you working for now? Same company. So you oh, know, same America's company. largest telephone company. Oh, uh, that would be uh, T-Mobile? No. Uh, <laughs> you know what I heard, though? I, I was looking at something, and it wasn't a phony thing either. They said the, the, the most satisfying of all the phone companies is T-Mobile. That's what I've heard. Yeah. I, I, I've been with them for about two years now. And I am very happy with them. I'm on the Still. over 55 plans, $90 a month for two phones. It's great. What I'm outside of a big city? What, what, yeah. what makes you like them so much? I don't know. The service is good. I just got a brand new Galaxy S22 this morning. And uh, it's it's a lovely device. And the service is good. And I never have any issues. And, you know, and it's cheap. $90 for two phones. For, it seems like a deal to me. Now, which one do you think? Which which one do you think came lowest on um, satisfaction? AT and T. Probably Yeah. Yeah. And who do you subscribe to, Shecky? AT and T. And who do who do we subscribe to, Marjorie? AT and T. And who does Jason work for? <laughs> <laughs> and what happens this week? The three G network goes well, away. When we were in when we were in Mexico, yeah. when we were in Mexico, my phone worked every time. Calls, texts. I was talking to you, and my buddy who had AT and T couldn't get a signal for his life. Dependent on. <laughs> See, I don't know why we own half the phone companies down in Mexico now too. So, <laughs> how, how about you, uh, Mandy? You, what do you have? AT and T or? I have Verizon. Verizon. Okay. And I'm in Mexico. I I Facetime somebody in Atlanta. I mean, no problems at all. I, mean, I don't know if, where. Um, the resort I was at, I have no idea, but it wasn't a problem. So. Well, 5G is getting uh, getting to have problems now. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Because okay. the airlines say it is interfering. It, you know, so I know you talked about that on one of your shows. It's one spectrum of the 5G. It's a, the C-band or something like that that mm -hmm. they're doing, which they can turn it down around airports. But, you know, that's the thing. I have 40 other countries were already using it in it around airports and it hasn't been an issue yeah well why yeah. should we why should we have to why why do we have to kowtow to a few planes yeah, when why it's the can't whole the pilots fly, fly the plane huh maybe the pilot should learn how to fly the plane i mean i have this great fear when i saw all that news that i just turned my phone on and a, a plane comes crashing into my apartment <laughs> you know that's all a bunch of crap i got a buddy that flies a lot and he never turns his phone off in the air. In fact, he sends me texts sometimes, and I'll just get them randomly when he flies over some, some, <laughs> some uh, you know, some cell tower somewhere in the middle of the country. Yeah. But, and that's all it is, is some type of uh, like 
radar system that they have to that the plane communicates <clears> that they know in bad weather to tell them how close to the ground they are. Yeah. But you know, they can always turn those signals down by the airports. It's not, it's I don't know, they're making a bigger issue. And that's what they said they're willing to do. But it's affected the stock prices on the phone companies. Yeah, that's, yeah. Everybody, oh, five G is going uh, not going to happen. And and Shecky, you got a new phone from? Did you get a new phone yet from AT? Yeah, they sent me the cheapy phone, but it was free. You know, free to replace the one I had because that was three G. So so what do you, what kind of phone did they send you? I don't know. It's over there somewhere. It's a does flip a phone. Flip, oh. say, does a flip open? <laughs> I got one too, Alex. It's what? a XR, I believe. It's a. That's it. Yeah, it's XR. An XR. What's, yeah. X, what's XR? I never heard of it. It's like an iPhone. It's an iPhone XR. It came oh, between. I see. 10, okay. Uh, or it was the 10. I don't know. My kid, both of my daughters had it and they hated it. So they both got, they just both got new phones. Cause, and, and especially my older daughter, she's, she'll keep her phone a long time. She's very frugal, but she was like, Ugh. she didn't like her. So she got, it's not bad. Whatever. This was Apple. Yeah. 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 Wow. Wow. Yeah. They said the camera was bad or something. Oh. They didn't... The phone. Right? <laughs> oh, oh, I know. I, I love how, how people say, you know what? The phone's the phone sucks. Why? Because the camera doesn't work. Well, wait a minute. That's that's not a phone. Well, no, I mean, actually, I think it was something with the that like they could never hear. Like it was something with the sound piece. I don't know. They well, it's like talking to Alex on the telephone. It's 1898. <laughs> wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute why is it 1898 i i, I use, you barely hear you you can barely hear me i use my i told uh, you that every time you call I me use, I, I, watch. I use my airpods yeah and that's what usually what causes the problem yeah but then otherwise i have to hold the thing up to my ear and i don't oh, know you poor oh, boy. God. Oh. <laughs> oh i'm sorry right, i'm sorry you know, I mean, I'm an old man. My ears aren't what they used to be, and I can't hold a phone up to them. Yes, I like Jay, what they used to be. Jason's got his hand up. Jason. So I was just going to tell you, when you're saying that earbuds, like, I can't stand having stuff in my ears, especially I work outside. So I got these ones that are aftershock. They're like, a, was a bone um, something where they actually, they squeeze onto your head and, you know, you you can plug your ear and hear it even better. So it actually broadcasts through your skull. What it does is it broadcasts into the bone in your ear, right. what it surrounds the ear. No, no, it's nope. just, it goes, sits right in front of your ear. It's like a, a aftershock. They're like 60 bucks. Really? It's not it's the greatest sound good. quality, like for you to do your show or anything, but it, you know, it's pretty good for, you know, just being on the phone. Well, quality in my show have never been synonymous. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about that. I like talking on the speakerphone too, Alex. I don't, I would much rather just have it sitting somewhere and I can just talk. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, if I, if I did the speakerphone with Shecky, I don't know that he would be happy with that either, Shecky. Okay. But the, the, do my, do my earphones really sound that bad? I've told you that every time you call me. <laughs> He keeps saying I sound like I'm talking in what 19, 1898. 1898. Yeah. Watson, come here. I need you. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, that was and Watson, and Watson goes, What? I've got bad service here. <laughs> I've got ATT. <laughs> I don't know why I have ATT. I think I just won. I started with ATT and I've never left. Well, because I think you got it because of Apple. We were the first ones to have the Apple. The I think so. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. I think I remember that. Yeah. Do you, you just have the two phones, you and Marjorie? Yeah. Do you, know much, do you know how much you're paying for the two? Well, we we have separate accounts because um, she has her her job pays for hers. Oh, gotcha. Okay. No, it doesn't pay for the monthly. It doesn't pay for, for the phone. monthly. Yeah, my do you have like that? Do you have AT and T internet, or do y'all have or cable or anything? Is it I have Verizon internet? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I have yeah. Verizon internet I would, too. I would have, I would have you look at uh, T Mobile. I have, I don't work for them in any way, but the, the <laughs> price, the price is really good. Hey, I got five pay, lines and pay one hundred and forty bucks. You have five lines and pay one forty. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's because you work for them. I, I, I hardly even get a discount. Yeah. 
The, our discount is like ridiculous. You can go and get a promo <laughs> plan cheaper than I can get. Really? I pay, I think, God, I think it's 175 Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I'm paying also for the phone. So I, yeah, but that could I, be more than thirty or forty dollars. So yeah, see, I, I won't do that. That junk, man. Yeah. I go to the Apple Store and buy the phone outright from them, and not deal with that paying monthly. Yeah, I should have done that. I was going to do that again this time, but you know, you get uh, the insurance. That get the insurance, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think the only time I, you don't buy insurance on anything that you plug into the wall. <clears throat> but if you got something portable, you need to ensure that because you can drop them, they can get lost, they can leave them somewhere, whatever. So when it's about time to replace your phone, you should see what one looks like after it falls eight stories out of a window. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what I heard? How many here have a car that they're leasing? I do. Okay. What happens at the end of your lease? Turn it back in. You Well, the last time I did it, I turned the car in and got a new one almost exactly the same car three years newer mm -hmm. this year i'm planning on not doing that so i'm going to hand it in and and that'll be it i mean you, you might okay. want to look at buying your you, vehicle you, you want a better idea yes they give you a choice you can also pay to buy the vehicle to buy the vehicle sure, sure you're sure. better off doing that maybe even making payments because the cost of a car now has gone up so much that you could actually make a profit off of selling that car. And, and I bought this car for three years with 12,000 miles a year. So 36,000 miles. My lease is up in six months. I only have 16,000 miles. <laughs> Dude, you oh, should buy that. <laughs> it's fucking worth a lot of money. Yeah. I know. I, I would wait, buy it just wait, to sell wait it. Wait a minute. Let me ask you this question. You live in California, right? Yes, sir. How do you manage to only put 16,000 miles on I, your car during that? I was going to work every day. It was 40 miles a day. I haven't left the fucking house in two years. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I yeah. see. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Because, yeah. because I remember the thing I hated about leasing is, thank God I had two cars. When I would see that I was starting to use up too much, right. I right. would go and put, use my other car all the time. Sure. So, but I hated having to keep my eye on the, uh, on the mileage. Uh, you know, that's what I hated about lease. Yeah. Yeah. So it was cheaper to pay for a second lease than it was to pay the 10 cents per mile afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> probably. Probably. Yeah. 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 You, you, you may be right, though. I may, I may buy it outright and just turn around and just sell it and make it. Well, today, if you, that same car that you have probably yeah. cost 5,000, 10,000 more than it did back when you bought it. My wife's car, we were looking to sell it about two years ago, and in the blue book on it was five or six thousand. It's now twelve. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. I heard you could actually buy out your lease, turn right around, and turn it right back into the dealership and make money off of it. Uh -huh. yeah. you know, they actually contacted me a few weeks ago saying, Hey, we're interested in buying your car. So maybe I had to call them back. <laughs> yeah, they, they might buy you out and just give you money for it. Right, right. Well, you know, I haven't I haven't uh, owned a car in what sixteen years, something like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. Shecky remembers when I sold my last one out in California before we left, and he drove out with me from California in a mm -hmm. rental that we had. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have not had a car since then, and uh, I have not driven in about four years, which leaves me the big question, and Shecky knows this. The, can I drive? Do I still know how to drive? And I have this fear that I don't know how to. And I keep swearing. And then when, the next time I go out to see Shecky, I'll get behind the wheel of the car for a while. And just, yeah, yeah, but the problem is it's the other drivers now who will kill right. you. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm also Not worried. You. Well, I'm, I don't want to do anything to damage the car, but I already have. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, what, what, uh, I, to begin with, I'd have to be able to get into the dry, the uh, uh, passengers. No, the chauffeur will come out from the driver's side <laughs> and let you out. <laughs> well, no, I can open it to get in. It's opening it to it's get out. out. It's getting out. So I have to come around. You, yeah, or the, you can sit in the back seat. In case people didn't over. listen to last week's show, uh, I, uh, I, I I went to open the door, and he has one of those you know, a little pull out things that you, you have. And he yanked it. That's I didn't yank it. I just did what I always did with it. And it came off in my hand. 
and it was it looked like the plastic well, it's a piece inside. of cheap plastic and i will i will definitely admit that tell them how old the car is 25 years yeah so it's about time for that to go <laughs> yeah, I mean, no no cheap it lasted 25 seat. years nobody sits it, in that seat it sounds like the old rodney dangerfield joke I it's not like I'm, sure, like I'm running a taxi service all day <laughs> and people are get are sitting in the in that seat and i'll bet you they don't make that part anymore uh, no, it would be about five hundred dollars. Yeah. It charges five hundred dollars for the part. Yep. Don't care. Mm. That's why I said crazy glue, or I'll be the chauffeur. <laughs> <laughs> Driving Mister Daisy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. But anyway, so I'm. I'm. You know. Um, but I, I still want to get behind the wheel of your car one day, just to drive up and down the Fine. street, just to see if I can. If I still can get back into the feel of driving a car, you know, if I would be, and that part's going to be fine. It'll be when you're on the open road and you need if to I, react to something and your reflexes yeah. don't work the same. Right. It's just a muscle. Yeah. I got to exercise all the time. Use it or lose it. Yeah. But I mean, I'm sure if I got behind the wheel of the car, I would probably know how to back out and do things like well, that. The, those things, like I'm saying, those are, you'd probably be fine at. You want to have an issue. It's when something happens and jumps out at you, either how your reaction would be compared to what it would be if you're driving well my reaction would be slow anyway because i'm 82 <laughs> years old but that's and also the problem and you have all these people goddamn car an hour around you and they're the right. ones who are going to kill you yeah yeah well you're worried about those you're always swearing at those people as you're driving up and down the street but then again you always swear at people up and down the street so <laughs> no that's on the subway <laughs> Shecky and I sometimes we get together on a couple of times a week and we talk privately and and all we do is we both sound like crotchety old men griping, don't we? Yeah. These kids today. <laughs> well, they never what thought I tell you we're old. Do you, do you ever find yourself, Mandy? Mandy's probably. Maybe, how old are you, uh, Jason? Uh, forty-one. Okay, so you're. Easy on here. The baby. Uh, Mandy, you're over just you're over 50, right? I'm 55. When you turn when, okay, at 55, do you find yourself saying, when I was a young girl, we didn't do that? Yes, yes. How I find you? my you know, <laughs> wag, you know, finger wagging at people. <laughs> <laughs> Marjorie does it all the time. Right. You know, it, it, when I was a girl, young girl, they didn't do that kind of thing, you know. Never. Yeah. And Jason, how about you now at 41? Do you oh, ever yeah. say that? Yeah, I catch myself using the same lines that my parents did. Like, I brought you into this world. I can take you out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come, my dad. Okay. Then I guess we don't feel as old, right, Shaq? Well, we now have a generation of young people who don't give a shit about anything. Yeah. By the way, I uh, last week somehow I don't know I get on YouTube right and I get stuck in a something, and I got stuck on Rick Sheckman on Letterman and it's like this guy what's his name Giller Geller, John Giller John Giller makes these uh, compilations compilations and this one happened to be of Shecky as Elvis, <laughs> and wow. if you if you ever have a chance go on to YouTube and look up Shecky on El uh, as Elvis. Right now. It, it, <laughs> the worst <laughs> Elvis impersonator in the history of the world. No, you are the best impersonator. Because but, you are you know, I think I told you the story. The Elvis estate tried to shut us down because I was doing such a good imitation of Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> Where to God. Uh, you know, will be producer of all those um Chuck Lorre shows interceded with them wow 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 that's amazing google search letterman it's the first one that comes up yeah yeah, yeah. and uh it's shecky it's it's superb acting on his part it's just <laughs> the 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 emotions you put in invest in that character it's just well did you ever see my lawrence taylor who <laughs> lawrence taylor the black linebacker for the yeah. New York Giants. You played him? It was a phone call. Oh, it was a phone oh. call. 
No, it was not blackface or anything. Oh. <laughs> and, you, and you were just that low-key Shecky, right? Yeah, and then there was Donny Osmond. I did that a couple of times. <laughs> wow. Do, do you think Dave did this just to make you squirm? No, because I never squirmed. So oh, I pissed him off. I see. Okay. There was anyway. one time he had me playing Santa Claus on the street. Jeez. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, when you got up over to CBS, though, you never did Elvis anymore, right? No. Yeah. That's when we started doing the cats from cats, me and Mulligan. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway, hey, listen. I, did... I told you that story. One, one of the pieces was we had to walk to the Winter Garden Theater where Cats was playing. And there was a camera on the roof of our theater following us. And we get to the theater and all the Japanese tourists want our autograph. Because <laughs> <laughs> there are two cats from Cats walking in front of the Winter Garden Theater. <laughs> Oh boy! Hey, listen. I just looked. We've run out of time here. Boy, we have such fun here. I just like this, and good to have you here, Jason. You know, remember we're here on Mondays, okay? Yeah, I can get out on time now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I thank uh, I will, uh, get Rick Sheckman, of course, always. Uh, I'll see you in about two minutes, Rick. Uh, Scott Boddicker. Always good having you here. Len LaFrisco. Yeah. Still, still trying to recover from losing $5 in the uh, in Vegas last year. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say to Scott Boddicker, uh, 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 you, you've always said that on the show 1886, uh, is it? Three. 1883, that what you don't like is the narration by the yeah. daughter. Well, they almost killed her off last night. So. Oh, I got to watch that one. Then. <laughs> I love the narration on that show. I disagree with you entirely. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Len LaFrisco, thank you. Thank you to Charlie Wallace, the greatest umpire in the world, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Marjorie Miller, the greatest wife anybody could ever have. I'm only saying that because she's made meatballs tonight. Uh, <laughs> well, she really didn't make meatballs. She bought them from what? Fresh Direct? What? The meatballs. Oh, from Fresh Direct, yeah. Yeah, and then she says, I made meatballs. I don't get it. No, I said, we're having. <laughs> we're having meatballs. Steve Bender, great having you here. And uh, come on up and tutor me sometime. <laughs> Uh, Mandy, always a pleasure. And uh, traveling with Mandy today all the way to home. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. And it looks like you have a very comfortable living room there, you know, and, you know, in the home. And of course, Jason, wonderful to see you. We haven't seen you in a while. And I, you know, you're one of my favorites. Uh, and finally, Edward Berger, who signs us off by saying, that's all folks. <laughs> the that, that, that's, right there. that's his real voice anybody give, right. give, 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 give a big wave goodbye and i'll give a big wave goodbye too goodbye everybody 